Hello everyone and welcome to the development of an X-Wing in Real Solar System in Kerbal Space Program 1.1. So for my stream on May 4th, uh, in honor of May the 4th be with you, and uh, Star Wars Day, I decided to make this X-Wing. And it's got a body made from Lackluster Labs parts, and there's a lot of part clipping there. Uh, there is B9 procedural wings, and then KSP Interstellar for the antimatter engines. So we're going uh, real serious with this. And you can see the Delta V there. You'll notice the negative cost. I have no idea what's doing that. Uh, so uh, yeah, things are not uh, perfectly proper right now. Uh, there are glitches all over the place, but uh, it's sure looking good. I did put wheels instead of skids, you will notice. And that is because I intend to take off from the runway properly. And if we take a good look at the engine pods, we see that we've got radiators, we've got a fuel tank with water in, and then thermal launch nozzles, and then the plasma beam core antimatter reactors uh, that we will use as our engine. So it'll take the antimatter and send water on through and expel at a high velocity to create our thrust. So that is how it works. Let's take it out to the runway, and I'll talk more about it. So here we go. Ignition. And off we go. I am not at full thrust. I'm only at two-thirds thrust, and that's because I didn't want to uh, cause any problems for the wheels, right? A lot of stress on the wheels there. But now that I am pitching up, I will soon go to full thrust because otherwise the waste heat will catch up to me. And we'll see later on. I'll have the development of this whole thing later on in the vehicle, and you'll see what happens when the waste heat builds up. We've got a weird graphical glitch on the nose there, a little sort of gray box and X, but... Uh, here is the inside of the cockpit, raster prop monitor. Looking good. So it'll be a lot of fun to fly this when it's fully functional, when it's fully operational, you know. So we are in real solar system and we've got real fuels, real heat, daily re-entry. What we don't have is fair mirror space research or realism overhaul. Realism overhaul, probably for our purposes here because it's KSP interstellar engines, probably won't do too much, though the cockpit does have a reaction wheel in. So actually I should dump the reaction wheel in the next iteration of this and see how it works like that. Uh, you can see actually it's quite maneuverable right now thanks to that reaction wheel. Um, but uh, as far as far goes, the problem was I wanted it in. I had made a X-Wing in .90 with the fair mirror space, so I had to launch that one vertically. Uh, the problem was it was interfering with tweak scale, and tweak scale I needed to use to size the antimatter engines. KSB Interstellar uses tweak scale to size the parts, and so without tweak scale, I wouldn't have been able to make the engines the size that I wanted. Now you can see I'm checking on the waist heat there, and we're going up, full throttle, lots of g-forces, very smooth though. So again, we'll take a closer look at what was happening with FAR during the development portion of the video because I had FAR in initially while I was doing the live stream. So uh, we actually uh, had to dump it halfway through the live stream in order to make things work. And I'll show you all about that. I would describe this as a work in progress. I do want RCS on here. I want a docking port of some sort, actually. I do want to have the warp drive on from KSB Interstellar. Uh, right now there are glitches with the warp drive, and I'll show that later on. Uh, so I couldn't put it on, but that will allow us to do you know, interplanetary trips with it and uh, hopefully use the new RSS Extra Solar Planets pack so that we can do uh, interstellar trips with it, which would be really nice. So I'm looking forward to that, but first things first, we have to get things working. And you can see we're accelerating very well, and our boapsis is growing, Jeb looks fine. It doesn't consume that much antimatter, actually. I put a lot of antimatter in. I say a lot, but I think that's like 20 grams or something like that. It's uh, not physically that much. The actual antimatter containment thing is mostly uh, like some sort of field, magnetic field, to uh, contain the antimatter. Okay, well, I've uh, put it into X-Wing configuration. Uh, those are infernal robotics parts, infernal robotics hinges that are uh, used to tilt the wings there. They're pretty good. Um, uh, there, I'm just pointing out the thrust there and the ISP. So, for future reference, actually, it's 1,413, it looks like, ISP. I mean, it's not insane. Actually, with antimatter, you can get much better than that. 
that is uh, that is not high for antimatter. But yeah, plenty of thrust. This is obviously a very powerful, powerful fighter craft. Also fairly small. I mean, uh, the loaded mass of it is 20 tons. It's about 7.7 uh, .7 tons empty, and so the the 13 tons is water. It's all water, sort of like us. Okay, there's the reactor information, 220,000 Kelvin core temperature and 703 megawatts of max power output. Looks like it can run continuously like this for 8.88 days, but we will be shutting it off. It automatically uh, shuts down, well, it automatically goes into some other mode, I guess is probably the best way to put it. Uh, when the thermal nozzles are not active, so that's nice. Otherwise, we'd have a lot of waste heat generation. We do have little radiators on the on the engine pods, and those are glowing red now. So this is the view from inside the cockpit. Sort of nice. I think it'd be fun doing missions like this. Maybe someday Buckerman will get one of these. Who knows? So I'm putting this video up in real time just to show you the performance of it. So I haven't sped it up at all. This is the actual performance in real solar system. This is a 94 part vessel. Uh, we do not have firm rest space, which we would be doing other calculations. So you have to take that into consideration. But it's, you know, nearly real time, uh, real solar system. We've actually got, uh, I think, 10 procedural parts and procedural parts add a little bit more lag. And then the wings are also procedural that adds a little bit more lag. Tweak scaling is involved. There are a lot of mods involved in here and yet uh, with this many parts and with the visual mods also active, we've got texture replacer, we've got environmental visual enhancements, we've got scatterer. Um, I don't think I have planet shine there. But otherwise, yeah, lots going on and still pretty good performance. I shut down the engine because it's time to coast to apwaps. This is something we don't often do in real solar system. But in this case, it made sense to do it. And so this is the circularization burn, or the orbital burn, however you like it. I should note that the cockpit is tilted up 10 degrees. That's why we've been consistently away from prograde, by the way. Uh, that's actually the cockpit orientation. I didn't put another controller on uh, to control from that would actually line us up properly. So that's why I'm up, uh, pitched up 10 degrees and the prograde vector is flat. I don't think it would have been possible to do a sort of better trajectory because the g-forces are so high it accelerates so much um, and we couldn't throttle down without building up waste heat so that was a problem. Okay so we had to keep the high throttle and, and that meant that the coast to apoapsis was necessary. Anyway here we go we are in orbit 260 by 145. We can't bring it back down uh, because without realism overhaul there isn't any heat shielding on the lackluster labs parts. I don't even know if there's any heat shielding on anything really uh, to make it appropriate for real heat. So yeah, I had to pass on trying to bring it back down. But here we go. This is the main body with lackluster labs parts and the hinges. And here's the warp engine. And you can see the huge amount of exceptions that that's throwing index out of bounds. So that's why I didn't use it because I was a little bit worried about that. I've temporarily got a reactor on the tail, but I'll remove that. And there's me shaping the wings. There's B9 procedural wings. So if you haven't used these before, these are great. You really ought to try them out. And uh, you can actually change the color, though I don't do it right now because I still haven't finalized the design. And color is the last thing I take care of. So, uh, but it does have a lot of flexibility thanks to that, and you can really craft a great looking wing. Uh, I wanted to test the X-Wing with a jet engine first. Now this is the live stream and I had music going on so I can't uh, give you the audio so sorry for that. Uh, so we won't have the audio of the engines either. Now in order to control yaw, you know, there's no vertical stabilizer on the X-Wing per se. And uh, I, I don't know how they compensate for that, uh, some sort of compensator of some kind, but I decided to put these little tiny X-Fins on the sides. Um, I'll shape those rudders properly so that allows us to control the, the yaw and also to make sure that uh, it is stable in that direction. And so, well, I don't know if Far will agree with me. 
I had a little bit of trouble with the wheels. Um, uh, I tried to just put them on the body so that the, when I'd go into X-Wing configuration, it wouldn't bump into the wheels or anything. But it looks like the wheelbase was too narrow. And besides that, the wheels in general had other problems. I wanted to test whether uh, the wings were really doing well. You'll notice that our mass consistently increases. I started out like at 8 tons and then 13 tons, and now it's showing 18 tons. The reason for that is I added fuel to the wings, and there seems to be a glitch with that. So, so uh, there is fuel in the wings right now, liquid fuel, because I don't have the um, real fuels engine configuration that makes it use kerosene. So that's why I have liquid fuel in the wings there. You know that it was 18 tons inside the VAB, now it's only 20 tons. And it'll just increase like that. I won't be adding any parts or any resources. And I don't know why the hinge for that particular wing didn't work. I had everything on symmetry, but... At this point in the live stream, I have to admit that I was quite dejected. Uh, this was not working out very well at all. So that was worrisome. And look, now it's uh, 24 tons about without the... with Well, with a small girder segment. Yeah, no, basically without the girder segment. So I'm putting on the girder segment to get a wider wheelbase, basically. Even though I hate that, but look at that. Um, yeah, the suspension on those wheels, a little bit dodgy. I decided to tune that down, but part of the problem, you note the wings are not reacting very well. There is something obviously glitchy about the wings at this point, and we're at 26 tons. And here I go, sorry, no engine sound, because again, I was playing music during the live stream. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have the sound effect for it. So I can't add that in in post-processing. I don't have a jet engine sound to use. But uh, there, there are a number of things wrong about this. Uh, you can see the deviation in the thrust there. Um, you can see we're not accelerating very fast. Part of that is because we're really, really heavy and I didn't notice. I thought we were still a really light vehicle, you know, 8 to 13 tons. But instead, we're now at about 28 tons because of the glitch. Um, the second thing is I don't have enough intakes. So the, the engine is not putting out as much thrust as it was supposed to. It's only doing uh, 30 kilonewtons instead of a base amount of uh, 78 at least. Okay, well, uh, that gets wrecked. Yeah, and, uh, you know, jet perishes. Revert. This is all testing, after all. I try and tweak the wings, but now you'll note that we're up to 29 tons. It's just ridiculous, whatever this bug is. But, uh, so yeah, uh, 29 tons, and of course we've got commensurately less delta V and everything. It's just going badly at this point, frankly. But around here I finally noticed the mass problem and quickly come to the conclusion that it is the wings. I tried to dump fuel in the wings, but that doesn't do any good. The structural mass of the wings was increasing. So I decided to try things out with, uh, with the stock wings. Note that FAR is in here at this point, right? Far is far is present, and I've been looking at the center of mass and center lift all this time. Um, so here we are with the stock wings, trying it out, and the mass is right, but I still haven't got the extra intake on to uh, really get the engine on high thrust. So what's going to happen here? And the answer is that Far is messing up with the lift of this, and I'll show you that in a bit. And it's because of the tweak scaling. So I mean. You know, mods sometimes conflict and we just hope for the best, but in this case it wasn't working out very well. Um, the thrust line seems normal, it's straight back, so that's good. Uh, possibly the deviation was because of the wings, and but we can we take off? Well, we're going at very high speed now, we've got the acceleration, we should be able to take off by now, but I can't. Nope, nope, uh, pulling up does not help. You can see I've maxed out pitch and it ain't working. And that's a no-go. Alright, so what's wrong? Well, take a look at where the center of lift is. The center of lift is in the nose. <laughs> now, the, the, the Black Luster Labs parts are not lifting body, I don't think. And even if they were, they wouldn't be producing that kind of lift. And checking out far, it's not reading anything. It's just give, it's given up totally. It's like, uh, I'm not here, don't pay attention to me kind of situation here. So, yeah, I, I don't get what's going on with FAR there. 
but it, it was between far and tweak skill that I can tell you. Um, and that's been reported in the threads and they're, they're fixing it, I'm sure, or I don't know who's going to fix it or what, but anyway, but, uh, yeah, I, I did some testing off to the side to verify this, but it didn't take too much effort. <laughs> it was pretty certain. All right. So that's when I dumped far. And so now when I tried it without fair mirror space, uh, you know, uh, same design with the stock wings here. We're accelerating just fine. Lots of thrust vectoring on the engine in lieu of uh, actual yaw control, apparently. Uh, Jeb is looking thrilled. And we could probably rotate by now. We're not really getting as much acceleration as I should because, again, I actually need another intake. Um, so we're going pretty darn slow still. This is about 150 miles an hour, 70 meters per second. And you can see much slower now, 50 meters per second, 60 or so. So yeah, definitely not the speed you would expect, and that's because it's starved of intake air. Uh, aerodynamically, it's not too bad. Uh, there's no obvious horrible drag line coming out, so that's good. Now, for somehow in the VAB, I messed up the wings, and you can see they're tilted wrong on the body there. And so here's me trying to figure that out, and uh, this is during live stream, mind you, so... Uh, I decided to uh, cool it for a bit because that was getting me irritated and to test the engines. So this is the antimatter engine and this is a large thermal launch nozzle and then the antimatter containment unit and then in between is the, uh, the antimatter reactor. And then there's a tank of water, my chosen fuel. Okay, so after that, I decided to rebuild this design with the air intake and now the B9 procedural wings instead. So now we're going to see something decent. Okay, off we go. Unfortunately, we can't hear anything decent again. Apologies. Off we go. Great speed this time. And I decided to go with a full go around and also test out the X-wing portion of it. Now the wings are lighter, there is no fuel this time. I figured out that uh, adding the fuel tanks into the wings was what was causing the glitch which kept adding mass to the whole thing. So I decided to just not add fuel tanks to it. And so that worked out better. So no added mass now and the wings separate properly. We didn't have that glitch. Apparently the glitch that added the mass to the wings was associated with the glitch that uh, caused the wing separation to not work on one side as we saw before. So after a go round, I of course bring it down for a landing. Make sure that works out. You can never be too sure about the wheels these days. So, and uh, now again, there's a reaction wheel in the cockpit. So that's why it's uh, sort of got this sort of jerky motion to it when I try and maneuver. Uh, without the reaction wheel, I think the movements overall will be a bit smoother because then it's just the control surfaces controlling it. Okay, and of course with the reaction wheel, SAS has inordinate control, right? Okay, but otherwise, touchdown. And I decide that we are ready to go for adding the engine pods. And to do this, uh, legitimately bring it all the way to orbit. And so there's me sizing them appropriately. I added a extra level to the tweak scaling on the antimatter reactor, so we've got extra small antimatter reactors there. By default, a KSB Interstellar doesn't have them go that small. So keep that in mind. I do a static engine fire test to make sure that the antimatter engines work properly and also to check out the thrust. Good thing too, because the thrust was zero there. <laughs> Uh, that, that was actually because I had missed uh, the, I think I missed the antimatter or water. I think I missed the antimatter. So uh, I think it was just shooting out water there. But off we go. This is the first test of the system. Uh, not the one that you saw before because I had to do a few flights. But this one was where I discovered the waste heat issue. So you see I've throttled down here because I thought that the acceleration was too high. But because I throttled down, the waste heat was allowed to build up in the reactor and that caused the emergency reactor shutdown you see there and uh, well we were not going into orbit there uh, fortunately the reaction wheel allowed me to bring it down 
So I was able to nose down, gain some velocity, and try and head back to Cape Canaveral. And that's where I'm, I've been launching from. So yeah, you can see we are, we're basically under control here, heading for the water, but I do manage to turn around. It's pretty nimble, but who knows how I'll be with FAR. And I, again, I do intend to test it out with FAR and refine it like that. We'll have to see how that works. So here we go. We don't have too much velocity to work with here. And though the engines aren't working right now, I tried to fire them again, but that waste heat was persistent. I, I later on put radiators on the engines, and maybe with those, the waste heat wouldn't be so persistent. But in any case, uh, I had to sort of ditch. I tried to aim for land, but that might have not been the best idea because of the slope that we're encountering when we hit land. Uh, did not make for a soft landing at all. But anyway, uh, so that was the development of the X-Wing that you saw earlier in the video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.